Okay, so today's topic is Vedic Archaeology. Uh, we have Michael Cremo, an eminent Vedic archaeologist, uh, who basically is trying to defeat the Darwinian theory using Vedic knowledge. He's initiated by Srila Prabhupada as Vrutakarma Das. So here he is in Moscow in front of a painting of Charles Darwin and Alfred Wallace, who originally gave this theory of evolution by natural selection. But we also have the concept of Vedic archaeology, which refers to Vedic tradition based on four Vedas, Hananet Upanishads, Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, Agama Shastras, etc. So the origin of species, they say that man came from monkeys. Uh, Darwin's credentials is like an MA degree holder, an accidental scientist. So he's not really that qualified compared to uh, what you see on the right side, the qualification of Lord Krishna delivering the Bhagavad Gita, qualification of Arthur Keith, who wrote the book Antiquity of Man, and qualification of King James Version of the Bible, who happens to be a ruler. So Michael Cremo, Dhrutakarma Das, he wrote many books around forbidden archaeology, the hidden history of human race, human devolution. So people talk of evolution from animals to humans. So Dhrutakarma Prabhu talks about human devolution. If you don't take care of your human body, you'll become um, an animal or a plant. So it's going the opposite direction. Then he talks about divine nature. That's one of his other books released in 1995. And uh, a forbidden archeologist in uh, 2010. He was here in Seattle around 2005 or 2006. So devotees took him to Microsoft campus and he gave a lecture there. And then in 2012, he wrote a book called My Science, My Religion, a set of um, academic papers. So he has, um, He's very accomplished. He has written books. Uh, he has uh, appeared on TV interviews. So his uh, research proves that uh, what Darwin claims, that is not true anymore. So point into creation from evolution. So in order to dive into this topic, uh, it's, it's a very um, scientific topic, archaeology. You need to understand what is stratigraphy. Stratigraphy means there are different layers of rocks. Even if you dig a uh, hole, a um, pit in your backyard, you will not see the same layers. There are many layers. And as you keep digging deep, you will go to olden era. If you dig like say 70 feet or 100 feet deep, then you'll get very, very different kind of stratigraphy, even in your backyard. So there is the concept of correlating rocks. Correlation is establishing equivalency. So there is the concept of physical stratigraphy. Lithostratigraphy deals with similarity of rock type. So if you dig a pit in your backyard and you get one type of rock at say two and a half feet, and if somebody in Issaquah digs a pit and they get the same type of rock at two feet. So now there is curvature in that strata. Strata means a layer of sand or rock or mud or earth. So the same environment and resulting rock is called uh, one strata. So lithostratigraphy is equivalency of the same type of rock. Then you have magnetostratigraphy using similar magnetic polarity to establish age equivalency because as you go deep, sometimes the earth is north-south, sometimes it is south-north. So due to various magnetic activity happening within the core of the earth, um, these different times as the earth got accumulated, uh, they either do north-south or south-north. So this polarity varies, which is true um, on any planet, but we live on Earth, so we are worried about Earth. And then uh, you could do dating 
means you assign a date to when that particular strata was formed using the magnetic principle because there are some theories around um, and experiments around if it is north south at this time it is created in the cambrian period or in the jurassic period at different such periods and then there is uh, a different science called sequence stratigraphy which shows sea level curve so if you do an oceanographic class then you will learn that uh, how different sea level curves correspond to different ages of the sea because there is volcanic activity happening even under the seabed. So in order to disprove Darwin, Ruthakarma Prabhu took uh, the help of archaeology because archaeology doesn't lie. Um, different layers, if, if there is a skeleton that is found 70 feet deep, it is surely created at that period, whatever that period could be. It could be Protozoic period or Masonic period. So it's, it's very interesting science. I first studied this as a part of preparing for my gate examination 25 years ago. Um, and then now I'm studying it again in the context of disproving Darwinian theory. Then there is the science called biostratigraphy, using fossils to establish age equivalency. Um, so the previous one was not age equivalency, it is the quality, the same type of rock. But now we are talking about biostratigraphy using age equivalency. So you have zones or biozones. So the time interval between the first and the last appearance of fossils or fossil in that particular location. And then uh, you look at lineages for traits or qualities that change gradually over time you can say the age of the fossil bearing rock, right? The first in is zones based on the fossil. So if the fossil is a coal from 300 million years ago, it, it set a certain um, age equivalent to a coal at 300 million years ago, say in um, Texas or in New Hampshire. So it is not the strata equivalency, but the age equivalency. And then there is the index fossil, a fossil, that existed for a short period of time, um, based on which we can say that this layer is so many years old, 100 million years old, 10 million years old, 300,000 years old, so on. Then there is this science called chronostratigraphy, establishing isochrones or timelines. This is usually accomplished through the use of marker beds that represent a geological instant in time. So the concept of a marker is, for example, you have a litmus paper, blue to red is acid. You take a blue litmus paper, it becomes red. Then the particular medium is acidic. I have done this in my seventh grade. I don't know about you folks, but and, and we used to do these experiments in our high school. So it, it, it's a marker, it means it marks the age, a geological instant in time. So there are principles of stratigraphy. So superposition, original horizontal horizontality. So a particular strata is at a certain level of horizontality. Superposition means the most recent one comes on top of the older one. So the topmost is the most recent. It could have been created in the last 20 years due to leaves coming in in your backyard and forming a layer. But as you keep going down, it is the older age. That's the principle of superposition. Then lateral continuity means one position is the same as the other position. Then you have faunal uh, succession means biological. A leaf that is captured 70 feet deep is a particular age versus a leaf that is captured in the strata, um, say 10 feet deep. Especially if you are digging a well, depends upon how deep you go, you can go to pretty deep locations. So when you the, uh, the picture on your left is called a trench profile, uh, vertical drawings of sedimentary layers. So these are all called sediments. Uh, these are all encountered at an archeological site during the process of excavation. So as you're digging, you have different layers. So they preserve the record of stratigraphy of the site. And then this record is used by future researchers. So they create a trench profile, document it, so tomorrow if there is rain or shine or something, it is still okay. 
right? You can still move forward with that. Because you have a record, you can still move forward with that. So the archaeology trench profile methodology is uh, at the first season of excavation, a benchmark is chosen and the site is surveyed. So many meters from the sea level. This is the quality of the land here. They document it. Then a horizontal grid is established, usually at meter intervals. One meter is, you know, uh, this type of rock or this type of sand. They could be subsections also. Then usually takes place vertically in blocks controlled by the placement of this grid. Then you define the vertical walls as you keep digging on. And the metal within them is removed and showed in cross section the layers. So the cross section is this. In engineering drawing, this is called a cross section. Then the sedimentary beds, they provide the raw data for trench profiles. Then periodically excavation work is halted um, as they see the newly exposed trench wall and they transfer the information into a large sheet of graph paper or increasingly computers, maybe in an AutoCAD drawing like that. So they work on these different things. Then the sedimentary units of interest are labeled in the field with number or letter. So this is layer one, this is the quality of the sand, is it loam or sand or clay or gravel or basalt or rilmanite. So these are different levels. Um, if you want to learn more, you should go to India and buy the textbook that they prescribed for the gate examination after four years of engineering. If you want to do masters, they, they teach you all this stuff at that point. So, and then they define the position of any archeologic or geological feature, and then they draw it to scale. Then the surveyed grid of strong twine is attached to the vertical wall. So a twine string is dropped from the top and with long nails, and then they define this at this level, this is the type of sediment, this level, this is the type of sediments. All this is for documentation. So tomorrow if there's a flood or rain, uh, they will still have that record. So a series of such profiles is drawn and they're only spaced a meter apart. And these annotated, annotated means labeled profiles are later reconstructed in the office or on the computer to form a 3D picture. So th there is a lot of um, websites that give all this research. I took it from Pleistocene Coalition. Pleistocene is a era in the geology of Earth. So here is a sample trench profile which says this area is undisturbed, this area is undisturbed. Here you are creating a flexible grid and then excavated below the bed like that. So you go deep, deep, deep. So here is how a trench profile looks like. So fossil succession. So this top one, is it the most recent or the most oldest? The most recent. So this person has dug, 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 and here is sitting at the bottom and he is taking a sample from here. So which layer is he taking the sample from? Layer two, right? So then he will see these different bones and then say, oh, this kind of animal with this bone lived at this level, right? So then the different profiles are made like this, as you see in the right. So there is something called Walter's Law. I took this from University of South Alabama's um, website. So uh, red shale is at the lowest level as you dig in America for fuel. In America, mainly digging happens for petroleum because we are a petrol crazy country. We want petroleum so that we can drive from point A to point B and quickly destroy Mother Earth. So the Walters law basically says that there is layering and the layering is correlated and the layering, they used something known as statistical technique called Markov's law 
to define what happens, the interrelationships between these layerings. So there are many archaeology sites in Europe and Africa that man was on the planet for hundreds of millions of years, contradicting Darwin. So there is a place called Letoli track site in um, Africa, Southeast Africa. Then there are places in Greece and in the Mediterranean where they found human bones very deep in the ground, which shows the more deep the older the civilization when these people lived and their bodies have been um, the, the tissue on the body is decayed but the bones are still intact even after 100 million years that's an amazing mystery they, like these people had to dig like 60 meters that's what 60 times roughly three feet so 180 feet deep that's like the uh, you know size of a well to get water so who knows, under our homes, if you go 50 meters deep, there could be some graveyard, ancient graveyard. And if you get bad dreams in the night, now you know why. So miners found fossils in 50 million year layers of earth, right? So in Sierra Nevada, due to the gold rush, miners came. And in the rock in which miner founds bones and artifact at the Table Mountain, and the Table Mountain is 50 million years old. So Vedic archaeologists will not be surprised because according to Vedas, people have been there on the planet for billions of years. Many Yuga cycles have passed. Um, so I did a calculation on Excel and it takes 605, four Yuga cycles to go back 2 billion years. So let, you, let me show you my calculation here if my computer responds. Okay, maybe later. But our conventional archaeologist would be very surprised because his or her textbook will, doesn't say that humans existed. Like, you know, that's how when I was in school, they said, oh, humans are very recent. Um, so there were a lot of animals. Then, uh, I mean, the first there was amoeba. Then there were a lot of water creatures. Then there were a um, lot of things that flew, then came dinosaurs, and then came humans only about 100,000 years ago or 50 or 60,000 years ago. That's what the textbooks told us. And even though there is so much research to the contrary, our textbooks are lying. They continue to teach this gobbledygook. How do I know? Because my kids, when they went to Skyline High School, they were taught even in 2019 this nonsense. So this nonsense is being taught cheating is going on right now. But you see here in California, you know, it is, if it is India or some third world, okay, don't believe it. But here, the most advanced place in the world is California, technologically, and there they are finding it. So in Table Mountain in 1866, Mr. Madison, uh, he's the owner of the mine, the gold mine. So as people were digging on his mine, they found this. Of course, Mr. Madison is also dead. What's the use of gold, right? Eventually all of us will die. So better to use that gold in service of the Lord. Otherwise, somebody will be putting your name on a PowerPoint and say, so-and-so was so rich, but they never used their money for anything. So that's what it is. Uh, so J.D. Whitney, state geologist of California, he analyzed this and they basically said, this is a very, very old, Thing. This is 50 million old. It is since it's found in the strata for 50 million year old, then it is 50 million year old, right? If you remember, let's go back to the stratification. If this layer number two is 50 million years old, if this gentleman here who is digging finds a skeleton here, it means that skeleton is 50 million years old. If in layer five, which is 10 million year old, if you find Skeleton of a dog means that dog is lived 10 million years ago. It's amazing how skeletons are preserved. So recently we buried Bhakti Charu Maharaj's body using limestone and salt, chalk and salt. Chalk means limestone. And um, as I was reading this, the ancient Iraqis used to also put their 
forefather's body in limestone and bury them. And even after one million years old, the body, I mean, the the skeleton is still intact. So that shows that uh, you know, after ten million years, if somebody were to dig in Mayapur, they will still find the bones of Bhakti Charu Maharaj there. So nothing will happen in limestone; it gets preserved very well. So you should all become sannyasis so that your disciples bury you instead of burning you. Sannyasis get the special privilege of getting buried. So if you want to stay there forever, remember then you should be buried. For which you have to take sannyas, change them, and then have thousand disciples. So their position indicates that they were of 30 million years old, over. So it's not like 30 stop, but over 30 to 50 million years old, based on when these skulls were found. You'll see a lot of skulls in this presentation. So Sir Charles Lyell wrote in his book, Antiquity of Man, that the flint tools and their fabricators were coeval, means they stayed at the same time, co, co means together, with the extinct mammalia embedded in the same strata. So at that time, uh, we used to have animals called woolly mammal, woolly mammoth. Woolly mammoth uh, roamed the plains of North America back then. And then he referenced the Neanderthal skeleton skull discovered by Hermann Schaffhausen in 1858 near Dusseldorf, Germany. So I used to live in Germany. Um, I never knew that they had such ancient, because you know, most of these modern textbooks say that people originated in Africa and then they came to Europe. No, people lived there that long ago in Germany too, right? Or for that matter, anywhere in the entire world. So if you do a proper excavation in Kurukshetra area, we will find the bones of all the 640 million people killed on the Kurukshetra, but you have to go pretty deep, right? So, author Keith is making these statements. No revelation of prehistoric man could be more convincing than the discovery of the Heidelberg mandible. So Heidelberg, I actually went to Heidelberg many times. There are beautiful fortresses there. Um, very, uh, Germans in general are very, very disciplined people. Where whatever they build is very top class. Their fort fortresses are also very top class. Um, so Heidelberg, they found these ancient bodies. So again, this is from University of California, Davis. So there's a lot of good stuff there if you want to go and read. And so this is the um, slide that I took from University of Washington. They say Earth formed 4.56 billion years ago with a B. Um, and then Moon formed shortly thereafter. And then oldest crystal is zircon, 4.4 billion years old. And they say that, you know, oh, there was this uh, single-celled fossils and first cells with nucleus, hard-shelled animals, dinosaurs, and then humans. But this is wrong. And that is what Dhruta Karma Prabhu or uh, Michael Cremo is uh, telling us. So if you, so what is this thing called? Disha, the thing on the right that I'm just showing you, this matrix. On, on the right? Yeah. We just covered it. That I'm is a spot quiz. <laughs> yeah, that is a that is that is saying which era the things belong to. Okay. And what, uh, how yeah. old. Anyway, it's just a timeline chart and corresponding yeah, okay. to the trench profile. Yes. Yeah. Timeline yeah. chart. Thank you. So four point five four billion years ago. G means giga. If you remember your eighth class physics, mega means 10 raised to six, giga means 10 raised to nine. Anyway, most of you have forgotten everything because American education, American, all people do in America is watch TV. So here's the timeline chart that I drew because I didn't like this timeline chart that I took from University of Washington. It gives things not in a chronological thing. 
because this is what Bhakti Charu Maharaj, when he gave a lecture at my home, he said, the civilization is all upside down. We should break this civilization and start a new one. So this is my humble attempt at breaking the civilization and starting a new chart. According to the Srimad Bhagavatam, this is how things happened. Right, 4.5 billion years ago, Earth comes from the body of Mahavishnu. Moon comes from the body of Mahavishnu shortly thereafter, no, shortly at the same time actually, concurrent. Then Devatas inhabit the moon and other heavenly planets. What you are seeing is landmark, revolutionary stuff, this particular slide. Nobody has prepared a slide like this. To my knowledge, I searched the internet extensively. They all follow the Western ethos. Nobody has done a Vedic chat like this. So you're all very fortunate to see something like this. So then exp expansion of atmospheric oxygen 2 billion years ago. And first humans actually came 2 billion years ago, according to Dhrita Karma Prabhu, who is a disciple of Swami Prabhupada. And he's also a scientist by the name of Michael Cremo. So you can see that there is a little bit of animation in this. So the aquatics came and after that, the dinosaurs came and this is more or less correct according to modern scientists, but everything else about humans is wrong. They think that humans came from monkeys, not humans were actually there before these animals. And there is this concept of Cambrian explosion. All of a sudden, 541 million years ago, a lot of new species came according to stratigraphy. Um, and they could not explain what it is. So they said, oh, there was a second big bang kind of thing, big bang of um, evolution, but that's all nonsense, mumbo jumbo. Um, the real explanation is that all these species existed for a long time. So here is one thing, Lord Rama came 1.7 million years ago. The beauty of this picture is Supreme Lord Rama is there. Monkeys like Vibhishan and Hanuman are there. Humans are there. Birds are there. Jatai was there and so many birds. Chimpanzees were there. A lot of other people. Not everybody was monkey. There's some of them were chimpanzees also. Insects were there. So all species coexisted 1.7 million years ago. And then 5,000 years ago, Bhagavad Gita was spoken and Battle of Mahabharat happened. So this is the quad cycle. Satyuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga, Kali Yuga. All put together running total is 4.2 million years, one Yuga cycle. So we are here today in 432,000 years. Earth, as we know, will be annihilated, destroyed. That will be end of Kali Yuga. So what modern scientists do, they put Ramayana and Mahabharata right next to each other around 4,000 years ago. Because they don't know. They have, and partly it is also due to envy. They want to discredit the Vedic civilization. Until Srila Prabhupada came, nobody was really had the guts to um, question these things. Srila Prabhupada, you know, proudly and boldly said, no, Lord Rama came 1.7 million years ago. All these scientists are rascals. So he had the courage to say that because he's a pure devotee. He had the guts to say that. Most people cannot say that. So here is, what is this picture called on the left? Again, quiz. Dev. The, the left side, Prabhuji? Yeah. I think there's exc excavation levels of the fossils. <laughs> You're making up your new terms. <laughs> Team left is called trench profile. Remember, I spent five minutes describing that. Trench profile. Yeah. Trench deep enough, then you will see different strata, and based on the bones, skulls, skeletons in these strata, you can label this trench. Did you already forget? I just told you. Connection 
Remember Walther's law, layering. This is the trench profile. And this is the step-by-step -step process. Periodically excavation work is halted. And the scientist will transfer the information into a large sheet of graph paper. The geologic feature is carefully measured and drawn to scale. A strong twine is hung from the top and it will be marked in different colors on that just to say what is coming at what level. Mm -hmm. It's called a trench profile. So this is a trench profile. Anyway, it requires a little bit of intelligence to understand these things. This is not a silly, simple topic. And then in this left picture on the right side, what is this called? Disha already answered this a few minutes ago. Timeline. timeline, yeah, it is a timeline, right? You are starting with when Earth formed 4.6 billion years ago, when it came out of breath of Lord Mahavishnu, and then these are different layers of creation on top of one or of them, right? So the different sediments are coming on top, one on top of the other. So each one of them has a particular age. You'll be using carbon dating and radioisotope dating. Radioisotope means it has a half-life. If you keep a radioactive thing, the things um, which are on the lower side of the periodic table in chemistry, so they have a half-life. So some things decay in half-life. So based on that, they find out these ages of this. We are not going to question their aging technique. We are going to question their uh, theory that human beings didn't exist so long. So how do you do that? By figuring out these different things in different layers. So I did an Excel spreadsheet and I calculated the time uh, Kali Yuga so many years, Dwapar Yuga so many years, and then running total here. So in the Jurassic period is when Ramayana happened. In the 41st Treta Yuga prior to us, right? Ram came in Treta, Krishna himself came in Dwapar, and we are now in Kali Yuga. So when human beings first walked on the earth, according to Shastra, that was 605 Chatur Yuga cycles ago. I had to calculate this in Excel. I, you know, put all these values, I dragged these columns and actually calculated it. This is not like made up number. So 2.543 billion years ago is when first humans walked on the face of the earth. They were very few in number. Not like now, 8 billion people. Even 50 years ago, the world's population was only 6 billion. So we are rapidly expanding right now. But back then, the population was very less. So Prabhu, as per the chart, you mean to say humans coexisted during the Jurassic period, the, 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 the dinosaur period? Jurassic period, Mississippian period, Cambrian period, and protozoic uh, period. Every period humans were there. This whole Darwin thing is mumbo jumbo. And I'll, um, I'll prove it to you because we have evidence of human skeletons found in all the way going to Cambrian, all the way going to pro, uh, protozoic periods. Wow. There are only few because the whole, it's not like the whole world is archaeologists, right? There are different people. We have different professions. A few archaeologists are out of love for Mother Earth. They go deep and figure out what's there. Not like uh, Desis. Everybody wants to make money in IT. There are some people, even if they get less salary, they will stick to uh, you know professions that they love. So what is this? 
Ram Setu. Ram Setu, excellent. So NASA took a picture of Ram Setu, and the bridge is supposed to be somewhere between 1.7 million and 1.75 million years ago. So going back here, where is 1.75 million? So it is early Jurassic, right? So which means when Lord Ram came and he walked uh, to Kanyakumari, and from there he had the monkey army build the bridge. There were dinosaurs in the United States. So human beings, God, and dinosaurs coexisted, right? Jurassic Park. Remember the movie. Jurassic Park is dinosaur era. Of course, that's basically a made-up movie. They recreated those dinosaurs again in the modern time and a bunch of entertainment. But yeah, Jurassic period did exist. So according to NASA, this bridge has been there. It's been dated at 1.7 million years ago. So that's when Lord Ram crossed the bridge. The idiots can say whatever they want to say, but you people should know that Lord Ram came 1.7 million years ago and you need to surrender to him. <laughs> Those are the topics. Surrender to Krishna or surrender to Lord Ram. So Latioli, remember we talked about initially when I started this session in Latioli, uh, in Tanzania, is where they found all these bones uh, from a long time. Actually, they found human footprints 3.7 million years ago. According to Darwin, human beings did not exist. Many of the animals didn't exist. But then how are these footprints there? So if you don't believe, you can fly to Dar es Salaam airport and go through dangerous Tanzania. Of course, it's lovely, looking very beautiful, but it's not easy to travel there and go to Latioli. So here are some Matajis and Prabhus who, are, who have excavated this and here are the feet. So human feet is like this, ape feet is like this and the footprint is like this. which shows that it is a human, it's not an ape. Ape would have come to the left. I spent six or seven hours making this PowerPoint presentation because it's not easy. I had to collect from so many sources to bring it to this level. And this is the gift I'm giving you. So anthropologist explores humanity's first steps from the University of Chicago. So these are the Chicago anthropologists who went to Latioli and took a picture and brought it back. So this is one other rendition of a stratigraphy, which shows different types of rocks, limestone, shale, basalt, loam, different kinds of things. So if you go to um, Grand Canyon, there is a place called Vishnu complex and uh, the uh, content is primarily Vishnu schist, which is Jurassic granite. And there is actually a temple called Vishnu temple. You see this thing? This is called a Vishnu temple even by Americans. So now how did Americans get the name Vishnu? We don't know, which means there were people here long time ago who used to pray to Lord Vishnu. But due to erosion, all these things, all this mud got washed away. So this was probably the level where people used to be there. And this was probably a Vishnu temple, um, which got like, you know, it's just staying there. It became a rock kind of thing. It's called the Vishnu complex. Uh, you can go uh, and then talk to some tour guide. He'll tell you where the Vishnu temple is in Grand Canyon. But where is Vishnu? This, how old is it? It is in Proterozoic period, all the way down, right? And what is Proterozoic? How old is it? Quiz again. How old is Proterozoic? It's somewhere in the bottom, bottom, bottom place. Yeah, it is in the bottom, bottom, bottom. Two point yeah, right billion years old. I mean, 2.5 is the lower bound. Upper bound is 0.6 billion. So it's a pretty wide area window. So 
United States is also a Vedic place. They were Vishnu temples here billions of years ago, <laughs> at least 1.9 billion years ago. You see this? So it's not like only India is Vedic place and everything else is nonsense. No, they, these places were also places for Lord Vishnu because the whole universe belongs to him. What is the question of only India where we have current temples? Again, these are top secret of knowledge. We, if without Srila Prabhupada's disciple Drutakarma Prabhu, we would not have this knowledge. And I have had the good fortune of meeting him uh, when he came to Seattle. I've met actually at least 30 of Srila Prabhupada's disciples very closely. That's why I've been blessed with this knowledge. And now you are fortunate. I'm passing this on to you. So there is this lady called Mary Leakey. She found solidified volcanic ash, 3.7 million years old, right? And he found the Latioli footprints right next to them. What does it tell you? That people lived 3.7 million years ago and there was a great volcano and they all got killed and they got covered layer after layer after layer. And somebody went there now to Africa, dug it up and they found a human footprint deep down. And they are ape men also. They are called Australopithecus. But their foot structure was quite different from the modern human being. You see, this is Australopithecus and this is human. So if you look at this picture, this is more human-like and not ape-like. So in a place called Huatlaco in Mexico, they found in 1970s, the Geological Survey, United States Geological Survey. By the way, India also has a Indian Geological Survey of India, something like that. They found something at 300,000 years ago. Forget all these billions and millions. Even 300,000 years ago, modern people say, no, it's not there. But look at this, it is there. They found it. And they used carbon dating, carbon 14 date. So you can research on internet what carbon dating process is. It looks at the decay of certain things over a period of time. Then there was a lady called Steen McIntyre. She said, oh, this is the true age of the size, site. Then they said, how can you go against conventional wisdom? You are a fool. So they fired her from her university profession, teaching profession. So she moved to some rural Colorado Rocky Mountains till Michael Cremo or Dhrita Karma Prabhu found her and gave her the information. Oh, you are right. According to our Vedic science, what you say is 100% right. There were people back then too. So here is the um, digging in that Mexican town. And uh, one of the excavators, he found the pictures of elephant, woolly mammoth, goats, cows, everything in Mexico. Engraved on bones. And the bones are still present from 300,000 years ago safely preserved in that mix of various chemicals under the ground. Then one scientist called Ragazzoni in Italy, um, he found skeletal remains of four people in layers of rock, very deep. And in this case, the layers are 5 million years old. If the layer is 5 million years old, how old are the skeletons? If you find a skeleton in a layer of 5 million year old, how old are the skeletons? 5 million years old. 5 million, yeah. 5 million plus or minus 35. But plus or minus 35 is meaningless, right? When you compared with 5 million. 
Yeah, there you go. So human beings have been there since then, since the time of Lord Ram 1.7 million years ago, and even before that, 5 million years ago. In Crete, Crete is uh, in Greece, like if you read Shakespeare, uh, he mentions Crete in one of his stories. So they found, based on again stratigraphy, a lot of human bones, very, very old, millions of years old, five to seven million years ago. Again, I took this from these various archaeological websites. Then evolutionists cannot explain human presence 3.4 million years ago. There's a different scientist, set of scientists who found this out. Skeleton in Tanzania, German professor named Hans Reck, he went there and he found a skeleton, one million year old bed, which means the skeleton is one million years old. It's not like somebody took all the pain to, uh, you know, dig a hole 70 meters deep just to put a skeleton there. No. And Buenos Aires in Brazil, they found a skeleton 1 to 1.5 million years ago. And the same thing uh, repeated here, 1860 professor Giuseppe Ragazzoni, he found in a uh, town of Brescia in Italy. So what does it all point to? It points to that human beings have been there for a very, very long time. And then Gerald Gerlinski, he found the tracheolus footprints along with mammals. So human beings and mammals coexisted. And this is how old, seven million year old. So we keep on going. So from 1.7 to 3.4 to 7 million year old. This is founds in the Balkans. So here are people, these are called geologists and archeologists. So they dig deep very carefully so as to not destroy the samples. Athens is the capital of Greece. That's where our good old friend Alexander is from. Alexander the Great who attacked India or at least attacked, attempted to attack India. But Purushottam, the brave Punjabi king, he drove away Alexander. So you should go and see some old movies in YouTube where Purushottam fights with Alexander. So 7.2 million years. Greece and Bulgaria. So now they're saying hey, humans came from Europe, not Africa. Which is true, humans came from everywhere. Humans were there in India, Africa, America, everywhere. Because how modern science works is they just take one piece of evidence, they put a theory. Then new piece comes, they discard the old theory and then start a new theory. So a Belgian, now we are in Belgium. We went to Greece, we went to Bulgaria, we went to United States, we went to Africa, now we are in Belgium. 30 million years old, they found bodies. Now in the United States, in Morrison, Morrison Willie, um, Morrisonville, Illinois, in 1892, it came in the newspaper. They found a gold chain in a piece of coal from a mine, which is 300 million years old. It was not like some miner had a gold chain and it fell down. They harvested the coal and some lady was cooking using coal, right? From the lump of coal, it separated in the middle and this gold chain came out from Tana Mines in Southern Illinois. Illinois means the state where Chicago is. So you can fly into Chicago and go to Tana Mines if you want to. So what did they find? Gold chain is found in a lump of coal, 260 to 320 million years old. Now we are not in single digits, 50 million, 100 million, 320 million years old. So human beings were there, right? So I don't know if any one of you wants to be my assistant and put all this chronology on a timeline chart of where they found different things. Because I spent like one and a half hour putting together that one slide. And I don't know if I would have time to put all this chronology of what they found where in the world. So it was eight carat gold, believe it or not. It was not 22 carat or 24 carat. 
which means people were pretty refined back then they could take gold and dilute it with copper to 8 carats right very refined people so again this is a different news this is from a magazine called swarajmagazine.com and then uh a different western site called argofila.com where they say 5 to 7 million years old footprints so humans were there in sweden also so in united states we had humans 260 to 320 million years ago who were not only living but they were making gold chains <laughs> very interesting and in sweden 5.7 million years again stratigraphy right depending upon how deep you go you may find layers somebody at 5 million somebody is at 50 million somebody at 300 million so here are the various um uh instruments used by 30 million year old humans people who were there 30 million years ago right there is a pdf on the internet natural and human flaking and then if you come to Illinois again there is a different location where they found these skeletons 1 2 3 4 5 so sing narshima kavicha before you sleep otherwise these skeletons will come in your dream and bother you in night and then the age of the rock at this place is 500 million years old now we are beyond 300 million 500 million years old. oldest is 2 billion believe it or not this is in west transvaal region of south africa south africa is known for its mines diamond mines gold mines so there were humans in existence 2 billion years ago using these tools this is called the clerk dorf spear the spear so they made a nice steel spear and they engraved with right now normally if you go to vrindavan and buy a bell and the lower part of the bell the artist will engrave three lines that's exactly what they did 2 billion years ago ago they engraved three lines right and this is the chemical composition of that product right and it's very hard cannot be scratched even by steel we think we are very smart and this came from lehigh lehigh university um i believe it's in indiana or in illinois i don't know one of these two places so this is the kleptox spear 2 billion years old so there is more evidence that vrta karma prabhu gives 600 million years ago in germany freiburg 500 million years ago in texas kimble county 500 million years ago in cambria england lake vermeer 435 million years ago in missouri believe it or not a lot of these things were coming in america so united states had a lot of population back then and they were doing a lot of activity here millions of years ago then 400 million years ago east of mississippi river i went on a boat ride on mississippi beautiful river so it looks like there were people living there 400 million years ago 387 million years ago scotland 360 million scotland 345 million st louis missouri 340 million russia again kentucky so there was this uh, lynn nottinger in 1971 he discovered in a big uh, in american indian copper mine he found some bones on the right side you see this bones human bones and stratum was at 100 million years stratum means that layer stratigraphy means signs of layering so this is what prithakarma prabhu or michael a cremo and richard l thompson who is sada pita prabhu who is also a uh, disciple of swami prabhupad who is a phd so they finally wrote a book saying there is a chain of discoveries going from 100000 years ago all the way to 2 billion years now what do you say 
we are at least 2 billion years old. We didn't come from monkeys. We came from human beings. So Darwinian account is human beings came 100,000 years ago. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Then uh, Dritta Karma Prabhu says, we have to therefore think of consciousness, which is individual and personal. Our pure consciousness is now contaminated by attraction to material substances. An original God inhabiting a realm of pure consciousness, call it Vaikuntha or Goloka, and a subordinate creator God inhabiting a subtle region, who is Brahma, and demigoddesses like Durga and Lakshmi Devi, an earthly realm where we are stuck, dominated by gross matter and gross people. Right? So we have to get out of this gross person and go back to that realm of pure consciousness, Sachidananda. So, Nitha Karma Prabhu says, in the devolution process, our original pure spiritual consciousness is covered by layers of subtle and gross material elements. But this process can be reversed. So there is a kind of revolution, we have to go through that revolution, by which we can free consciousness from its coverings and restore to its original pure state. Just like you peel an onion or you peel cabbage, the cabbage that comes in the shop, there's probably dust on it, so you take out one layer. So the pure cabbage is still inside, it's not like the cabbage is dusty. So every great spiritual tradition has some methods like mantras, praying, meditating. So we have to come back to our original conscious beings. So the universe is made of just six numbers and scientists called Reese said, electromagnetic force, atomic nucleus, material in the universe is constant, cosmological constant, unevenness in the universe and number of dimensions. So yeah, you can understand the matter easily, but to understand spirit, you have to work hard. With that, we'll stop. Any questions before we close? That is the result of my seven hours of research and one and a half hours worth of delivery. It's, it's amazing. It's like, never thought about it. Never thought about going beyond the scientific reasoning of what is science so put no across there, but then- no Nonsense. They are teaching you um, yeah. whatever nonsense they know. But there is, if you peel through the onion, there are different scientists. So you have to take scientists from geology, scientists from archeology, span scientists from biology, fossil uh, scientists, put it all together. And only Dhruta Karma Prabhu, because he's a disciple of Swami Prabhupada, he's capable of doing that. And he put it all together, right? So that's why we owe a lot to Srila Prabhupada because we are all donkeys. Only due to a guru, we come out. Om Ajnana Timirandasya, Jnananjana Shalakaya, Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha. Like Vivekananda movement didn't teach this stuff. All the bogus gurus who come, they are not teaching this stuff. Only Swami Prabhupada is teaching this stuff. Right? So he is the real guru who has come to deliver us from the cycle of birth and death. Okay, with that, thank you. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.